Are you looking for comprehensive solutions for your performance and automotive needs? Straight Line Performance and Automotive is a full-service auto repair shop specializing in race car fabrication, electrical design, chassis setup and alignment. Located in Hamden, Connecticut, they also specialize in aftermarket high performance and chassis upgrades. Be sure to look them up on Facebook at www.facebook.com backslash straight line, S-T-R number eight, L-I-N-E, performance, ampersand automotive, or give them a call at 203-415-5316. Welcome, racers and fans, to the Racers News Network Live, presented by Straight Line Performance and Automotive, and your hosts, Chris and Pete, bring you the latest news and interviews in the world of sportsman drag racing, including bracket racing, association races, outlaw, and no-time events. We are live every Monday night at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Take it away, boys. I guess I didn't know. Ladies and gentlemen, can I please have your attention? I've just been handed an urgent and horrifying news story. And I need all of you to stop what you're doing and listen. For those of you that aren't old enough to know, that is Ron Burgundy. I can tell by the smirk on your face, you know who it is. No? <laughs> no, no. <clears throat> you and your future husband need to go rent the legend of Ron Burgundy. He probably knows who it is. I don't. I don't watch movies. He does. Jasmine, Jasmine. Jasmine. <laughs> Girl, what are we going to do with you? I'm a movie watcher. <laughs> <clears throat> All right. Well, hey, good evening, everybody. <laughs> Welcome to Races News Network Live. We are uh, super proud, honored, and thrilled to be kicking off the 2022 Northeast Division Lucas Oil Drag Racing Series this past weekend in ADCO. And a um, couple of people that I personally know um, decided this was the year that they're going to run the entire Lucas Oil Tour, maybe some of the open stuff, maybe a couple of the national events. And... Um, Proud to have with me to my left, my friend Jasmine Weeder. How are you, Jasmine? Good. How are you guys? Good, good. So, as you told me over the winter time, you decided this was the year you were going to step up and try running the entire series if everything goes well. Um, what were you thinking? <laughs> um, just decided that this is the time to try it. There's a couple of them that I'm not going to end up hitting, but um, for the most part, I'm going to try to do a couple. Nice. Um, now, you're going to try and run most of the open races, too. Obviously, I know you probably won't be making the trek up to, like, Nova Scotia and Newfoundland and all that. I'll be at uh, Lebanon this weekend for the open that they have there, um, and then maybe a couple more. Depends on timing for work and money and all those other fun things. Money, money is your money. Money is irrelevant. It's monopoly money. You know. It's monopoly money. Just like that meme on Facebook. Exactly. Right. Right. So uh, now, is this your first time really racing at another track outside of Lebanon Valley? Yeah, I went to New England a couple times last season, but really, besides. The Valley, Lebanon, and then when I was in juniors, this is really most traveling I've done since juniors. Cool. Was it a strange experience rolling up into a different track compared to what you were used to every week? I feel like ACFA was like a big hit in the face, especially coming from Lebanon Valley. And even racing at New England, ACFA is so, so different, especially with the staging lanes. And of course, uh, me and Tina decided to pop, park in the top sportsman parking. Um, so we had to go all the way around and make a sharp little turn into the staging lanes, which was definitely not fun, but um, it was eye-opening. Cool, cool. Mm -hmm. But you, you you went some rounds for your first, you know, adventure outside of the, of New York. Yeah, with, the, with your Supercom car, anyway. Yep. So how how did that feel to actually go and you made it to what the fourth round? 
Yep, lost that um, fourth round. So I think it was, I think there were 11 or seven cars when I lost. Yeah. So yeah, it felt good. Cool, cool. Did you walk away with this, even though you went out fourth round, you still walk away with a smile on your face? Definitely, and a little check. So that's always a little nice. check. Very yep. cool. That's awesome. We feel like talking about some results. Sure. All right. <clears throat> um, I'll kick it off. Let's see. Uh, again, beginning of the 2022 Lucas Oil Drag Racing Series in the Northeast Division and HRA Division One. Um, let's start out with the class that I love, but don't ever ask me about the uh, index because I'll probably have a stroke and fall out of my chair. Uh, of course, I'm talking about Comp Eliminator. Um, buddy of ours of the show, uh, Santo Volpe over Scott Benham. Uh, Santo 003 on the tree, 744 with a nine, 166 miles an hour to Scott's 0.119 on the tree, 903 with a two at 117 miles an hour. Um, this is Santo's ninth career win. Um, he was going to join us. It's still possible that he's going to join us to talk for a few minutes. Um, see what happens. He's out to dinner. I'd rather be out to dinner too than listen to the <laughs> uh, You want to take super stock? I'd love to. So super stock, there was um, Herbie Noel versus Bob Cup. Herbie took the win with a 22 on the tree. 745, 74, wow, 974 with a five at 133.54. <laughs> Took over the win with the, from an 84 late, 1028 with a three at 127.62. And yep. All right, cool, cool. Uh, stock eliminator, Wallace Dent over Billy Pyers. Uh, Wallace with 58 on the tree, 1053 flat on a 1053 dial. So he's dead on uh, at 124 miles an hour over Billy Pyers, who was 31 on the tree, dialed the 1222, ran a 1220 with a two at 98 miles an hour. And in super comp, my favorite class. <laughs> Um, Brian Balducci um, took the win over Jeff Stryker. Um, Brian had a 15 on the tree, was 894 with a four at 164.91. And our friend Jeff was 90 on the tree, 890 with a seven, uh, 186.56. So that came down to our wonderful starting line. Now, Brian was the one that also knocked you out in the fourth round. Is that right? Yeah. Cool. Yep. So. Well, not cool that he knocked you out. But, <laughs> yeah. You know, you know what I'm saying. That was Even just I... um, a little mishap of the brake foot. Didn't hit the brakes hard enough for me, personally. We were even on the tree. Oh, really? Yeah, 37 to 38. Ooh. Yeah, <laughs> we both double break out. There you go. <clears throat> All right. Final round eliminations in Super Gas, another one of the index classes. They run 990. Uh, Jay Sapelka over Peter Luciano. Jay 004 on the tree, 992 with a seven. And again, it's an index class, so they run 990. Uh, Peter Luciano, 32 on the tree, 988 with a one. So. 140 miles an hour for Peter, 148 miles an hour for Jay. So with with the uh, the dot ninety stuff, Jazz, do you, you plan on staying in a uh, in a dragster? Are you looking down the road, maybe kind of trying something different? So right now I'm just gonna hang out in the dragster, but I do have a friend, Pete Diamond. He runs uh, Super Street and his S10 pickup. Um, he's given me the offer multiple times to run his truck, just like regular points here and there. Um, I'm definitely interested in Super Street. I think Super Street's super cool. Um, I just like 
trying to get in anything I can and trying to get it just makes you a better driver the more cars you can drive more right. classes you can drive makes you more talented and that's what I want to do nice now is it you have you have a special event coming up this year is that correct is it this year Oh, no, 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 no. It's 2023. 2023. Okay, I wasn't sure. Yep. Yeah. We have oh. some time left. So, uh, so if you want to try Super Street, of course, you know what that means. You'll be going up against in the... Uh, not. I'm not talking about Keith. <laughs> I say that joking. The, uh, the, the lady in the black truck. Both not this year, because she's She's expecting in September, but um, I'm sure she'll be back next year with a vengeance to make up for it this year. But still, she's got her sister in the truck. Yeah. So have you ever talked to Taylor about what it's like running Super Street compared to, you know, going from a dragster to a door car? I haven't talked to her particularly from Super Comp to Super Street. Um, I do talk to her every once in a while just for some like couple pointers. Um, I had no idea how to sign up for a national event. I had no clue at all. Um, yeah. So she told me on how to do that. Um, just like little things like that. Me and her actually graduated juniors, I believe the same year. Um, I actually have a time slip, an old one of me and Taylor um, at Numidia. I think it was in 2014 or 2015. I have an old time slip of us. Um, so I mean, we pretty much grew up together, um, but far enough away from each other that we didn't really ever get any close friendship or anything. But I know of her, I know well of her. She's a great driver, very talented. <clears throat> she's, she's an awesome person. She really is. Oh, absolutely. And she's actually going to be part of um, the live show that we're going to do at Lebanon Valley Dragway. It's going to be you, Kate, Carrie Bell. Uh, Car Carol Bell mm -hmm. and uh, Taylor's going to be part of it too. Oh, actually, hang on. Give me two seconds. You want to go ahead and knock out a couple of results? Yeah, I'll go ahead and do Super Street. So we had Sean. Of course, he is no slouch. He has been winning constantly. I think this is his second week in a row actually winning. I think he won last week as well. Um, he was 14 on the tree to Keith Mayer's 8008 on the tree. Um, he ran a 10.92 at 136.47 to Keith's 10.94 with a 5 at 147.20. Um, <clears throat> and then there was top dragster, um, Albert Stafferty. Sorry if I'm butchering your names. <laughs> I do it every week. Don't feel bad. Took over Vince Muslino. He's actually a good friend of mine. Uh, our friend Albert was 678 dial. Um, he took over the win yeah, yeah, of sorry. Vince Mussolino's 653. Ah. And then we have... Actually, can I interrupt you, Jasmine? Yeah. So... We have joining us a friend of ours who uh, who took home the Comp Eliminator win this past weekend um, at Adco. It's his ninth um, Wally. What's going on, Santo Volpe? How you doing, Chris? Doing well. Good, good. Thanks for calling in, pal. I appreciate sure. it. Thank you. So, hell of a way to start the season with a new with a new combination as well, huh? Boy, I sure can't complain in it. <laughs> The way the weekend started, I didn't think we would end up in the winter circle because we did have some issues and some bugaboos to work through, but we kept at it. And Chris and Sue and Mark, everybody did a great job. And we, we worked out a few bugs. It's not quite where we need to be yet, but by the end of Sunday, it was starting to run really well. Very cool. Now, is this a whole new setup from, from last year with the blower car? Is it new chassis and everything? Well, this is a different team. This, this is owned by Chris and Sue Wenzel from Ole, Pennsylvania. Okay. And the blower and altered is owned by Steve and Arlene Levine from upstate New York. So they, gotcha. I'm actually going to drive both cars this season. Um, Steve and Arlene are a little behind schedule. They 
are still waiting for some engine parts to come in that they ordered last fall. So the car is almost ready to go back together. And I think Steve is expecting to be out to do some testing probably within about three weeks or so. But Chris had called me over the winter and uh, I drove for Chris at the Keystone Nationals last September because Steve and Arlene were unable to, they were down for a few weeks with some, some engine issues. So I drove for Chris at the Keystones back in September and we had a pretty good weekend. And uh, we talked a little bit over the winter and he said, you know, are you still going to drive the blower car next year? I said, most likely. And he said, well, if you, <clears throat> excuse me, if you get a weekend where you're not in that car and you want to drive with us, you know, we'd, we'd love to go. So with ATCO coming up and, and the, uh, Stephen Orleans car not quite ready yet, I should, let's go. So it's kind of an interesting situation because I, I have two cars to run and they're both in different, they're in the same category, but it's two different teams. <laughs> uh, that's, I mean, both well turned out cars. Like I said, I, I I didn't realize it was an entire an entirely different team, but uh, yeah, you know, great with, people with the uh, you know the, the the flat black from last year and the flat black from this year is they you know they look kind of the same from just seeing them in pictures. Sure, boy, they're very different to drive though. <laughs> I can tell you that much. Uh, I I know you told me in the past when we, a few times we had talked at the tracks that you know the blower cars is is, is fun and all, but man, it's just it's tough. Oh yeah. Yeah. There, well, the blower car is a stick shift car. That's got a four speed B and J transmission Ooh. in it. And Chris Wenzel's a Econo Walter has a three speed automatic in it. And, uh, it, 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 they're a lot of fun, but they're completely different. Chris's car is about 400 pounds lighter. And Chris's car is kind of like a thoroughbred racehorse. You know, you sort of climb on and you, you'd be very gentle with the steering and you don't do anything sudden and you sort of just kind of sit there and, and keep it in the groove and where Stephen Arlene's car is more like a bucking Bronco. You know, you climb on and you grab it by the horns and you kick it in the side and you, you hope you can hang on long enough to get to the finish line before it throws you off. <laughs> wow. That's, that, that's funny. And like I said, I, I know you guys had had your fair share of problems with, with that particular car, but hopefully everything gets straightened out with it. Oh, I sure hope so. We're going to, we're going to stick with it. You know, it's a, it's a very unusual combination and, um, you know, it's a small block Chevy. It's, it's all good parts and pieces, but we met, we've got to make a ton of horsepower. It's a tough index. So a double A altered methanol is a 703 index. So we're, we really need to be deep into the 650s or even into the 640s would be better, would, would be better. But it's tough to do with, with that combination because the engine is small. Right. But the power is definitely there. It's just trying to get it reliable. Yeah, get, getting it to the ground. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's it. I mean, I think probably I don't I don't think he's ever had it on a dyno, but I'm sure it's got to be somewhere in the 1500 horsepower range. Wow. For such a for a short wheelbase like that and really not that big of a tire either, all things considered. Yeah, it's, it's a lot of fun to drive. I mean, it took me a little while to get used to it, but uh, we made a run at Cecil County last October at the division race. And uh, it didn't leave really well. We were trying some new things, but it went 171 <laughs> miles an hour at the eighth mile. Wow. And uh, that's impressive. I mean, it got my eyebrows up. I said, wow, there's some, <laughs> you got some serious power to do that. So I think it's just a matter of ironing out a few issues, you know, in the bottom end of the motor. Hopefully that'll get taken care of and then we can turn up the wick and get after it. Very cool. Very cool. So what does um, 2022 look like schedule wise for you? Uh, that's a good question. It kind of depends on how it unfolds because I've never been in a situation where I've had two cars to drive that are in the same category from two different teams. So Chris and Sue Wenzel are kind of leaning more towards national events and Stephen Arlene and Levine are kind of leaning towards more of the divisional schedule. So we're going to try to interweave both of them together, but I, I don't know. It's, it's kind of early to tell yet. So I, I know we're going to, we're going to hit as many of the division one races as we can. And then as far as national events, uh, we're looking at the possibility of Richmond and Norwalk and obviously Reading in September for sure. Uh, and then beyond that, I don't know. It's going to kind of see how it all pans out. Oh, very cool. Well, uh, you know, obviously a big congratulations to you on, you know, again, starting the season off with a bang, you know, picking up the win at ATCO. Thank you. It was, uh, it was a great weekend. You know, they, it's just what Chris and Sue are wonderful people and the help that we had on the weekend too, with Mike Hildebrand and Joe Dolan. And then my friend Mark Pettit, the came over and we were, he was helping us out with a few issues that we had. And, uh, you know, the comp cars are interesting. It's, it's so much, I spent so many years bracket racing and it's, it's a lot different because bracket cars, once you get them sorted out, it's basically just learning how to drive it and maintain it and, you know, be competitive, but the comp cars are a different animal. You know, you've got to have them on the ragged edge most of the time because you need to be 
as far under the index as as you can and that doesn't always mean that it's the most drivable thing and the most reliable thing so it's a challenge wow no doubt well cool santo I'm, I'm again congratulations and i'm glad you had a few minutes to come on and talk with us well, i and... appreciate the opportunity i'll see you soon i'm sure oh absolutely my friend we'll talk to you soon thanks chris all right santo best of Take luck care. All right, Santo Volpe, everybody, uh, your winner from this past weekend at at Co. Um, in the comp eliminator car for the Wetzel family. You can unmute yourself. <laughs> All right, so very cool. So again, congratulations to Santo, and he's always a cool guy to talk to. So thrashing on that blower car. So. <clears throat> all right where did we leave off top sportsman top sportsman top sportsman top sportsman let me find my page here all right top sportsman your winner from Tuxbury, massachusetts new england team jeff brooks over richard la chapelle uh, let's see, Jeff dialed 637, was 64 on the tree, ran a 638 with a six at 220 miles an hour. Uh, to Richards, 54 on the tree, 757 dial, ran a 761 with a seven at 167 miles an hour. So congratulations to Jeff. All right. Junior Dragster, it's something near and dear to your heart. <laughs> Junior Dragsters, uh, Paul Stalba took on Tyler. D. Pascal. D. Pascal. <laughs> um, Paul had a 30 on the tree, 786 with a two um, at 75.51. To Tyler's 005 on the tree, 790 with a nine at 80 miles an hour and 80.88 80 miles an hour. Um, for the win. All right. So the, if you're not familiar with the name Stalba, you should be because oh, while I you know watch, so. <laughs> uh, Stalba, there, you, you guys, I feel bad for you guys. You're surrounded by Stalbas. <laughs> so you have, you have Karen in top alcohol. You have uh, Paul. No. Uh, oh my God. Brain. Tom. Tommy Stalba. There we go. Brain cramp, sorry, <laughs> happens in super gas and super comp and God knows what else. And then you have their kids coming up through the ranks and the junior dragsters. So congratulations to Paul Stalba. Uh, let's see, junior dragster, 10 to 12, Landon Kennedy over Caden Payone. Uh, Landon was 91 on the tree. Dial the 897 with a 908 with an 8 to defeat Caden Payone, who was 110 on the tree. 892 dial ran an 891 with a 2. And Junior Dragster 6 to 9. It was Olivia Gale over the win of Kyler P P Payone. Payone. And Olivia had a 146 on the tree and was 1205 with a seven at 5212 to Kyler's 230 on the tree, 1413 with a two at 4310. Cool. So moving on to the national event stuff. Obviously, this is the last race in Houston this past weekend. Um, the home track of the Pro Stock winner. Now, out of curiosity. Um, we had Erica Enders and Camry Caruso in the finals. Did somebody in your situation that's kind of, that's you know basically a weekly runner look at that and go, hmm, hmm, that could be me. Maybe maybe not necessarily in a pro stock car, but maybe. Top alcohol, funny car, top alcohol, dragster, something along that line. Does it? Does that thought ever twirl around inside your head? 
I don't, people are going to think I'm crazy, but I personally, I'd be happy in super comfort top tracks here. I don't want to run top alcohol or any of that. Like, it's just not, the only class I'd probably get into if I had the chance is pro stock. I think pro stock is by far the coolest. Um, besides that, I like super comp. I really do. I like super comp a lot. There's nothing wrong with that. Competition. Um, very good. You know, and then I believe it was Cammy Caruso was also number one qualifier this past weekend. Yep, she was. She was. So number one qualifier in her what third event, fourth event, and um, makes it to the finals. You know, an all girl final. And uh, I I was talking with with Pete Sanka about this yesterday. You know, um, three four years ago, Kelly Barbado and I had the opportunity to um, interview Erica Enders, and one of the things that she told me before we went on, she goes. None of this guys versus the girls stuff. She goes, I don't want that. She goes, I want to be known as a racer. Doesn't matter if I'm a guy or a girl. I just want to be known as a racer. Do you do you guys kind of feel the same? I agree a thousand percent. There's a lot of there's a lot of old school racers I've realized in the past couple of years. I've had a little run in with maybe two or three people that, you know, they were like oh, um, you're just a woman in a car. And I'm like, and you're just a man in the car. What's the difference? Right. We're both driving our cars. Who cares um, what our sex is, honestly? Right. It change anything. Ooh, what's wrong with that? Uh, it's, it's the same thing with how some people feel about the juniors. I mean, unfortunately, you know, they can't see beyond their own whatever. In my case, really big nose. But, um, you know, they can't get over the fact that everybody starts somewhere nobody was perfect you know right out of the box yeah right definitely cool all right you ready to talk some national event stuff absolutely all right i'll start it off this time i know this will bring a smile to pete's face because he already told me on like thursday or friday not to say anything about the results on my facebook page so top fuel, Brittany Forrest, 376 at 321 miles an hour, defeated Justin Ashley, who ran 376 as well at 329 miles an hour. So I, I was looking at the um, reaction times, and I think she whole shot at him in that one. I was looking at it earlier because – Let's take a quick peek here. Summary of eliminations. I know Pete loves to see the reaction times of um, that professional of that particular car. Oh boy! Yeah. So let's take a quick look. Uh, do, 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 lay, uh, round one: the Brittany Forrest, ninety-five on the tree. I mean, not that I could do any better. Round two, 103. Round four, 84. And go to the finals. Oh, yeah, she whole shot at him a lot. She was 41 on the tree, and he was 74. Yeah, definitely. So fairly, fairly large whole shot right there. Yeah, that's a good amount. Yep. You want to take on Funny Car? Funny Car, Matt Hagen took on Bobby Bode. Um, was it who won on that? Matt Hagen. Matt Hagen won. Yep. I didn't watch any racing this weekend. I was preoccupied. Yeah. You know, you stare with this hand, you hold the phone in this hand. <laughs> All right. Uh, kind of a funny story about uh, Matt, Matt Bode, even though he, I mean, he banged the blower big time, blew the body off. Um, they said it looked like he was starting to pull away from Hagen when everything went kaplooey. Um, got out of the car, he was fine, threw his gloves on the ground, you know, kind of PO'd, reached down, picked him up, threw him again, threw his helmet on the ground. They interviewed Tony Stewart, who, uh, who is Matt Hagen's car owner, and, and Stewart said, You know what? I'm buying that guy a new helmet because obviously, slamming it on the ground that 
null and voids it right then and there. It's time it needs to be replaced. Um, so yeah, it's pretty funny to you know Stuart saying uh, you know I like that you know and every, anybody who's ever watched NASCAR in the past knows that Stuart is was a little bit of a hothead, and uh, so it's just kind of funny. I got I got a chuckle out of it. All right, pro stock. Like I said, we talked about this earlier. Erica Enders over Camry Caruso, both driving Chevy Camaros. Enders, 656 at 210 miles an hour to Camry's 662 at 209. Let me back up this and we'll look at, let's see who had the better reaction time. Ooh. Erica Enders, uh, 53 on the tree. Camry Caruso, 30 on the tree. So she wow. just outran, she just flat out outran her. So congratulations, Erica Enders. And she she wanted this win because this was her essentially her hometown track. So batter up, kiddo. For Pro Stock Motorcycle, Steve Johnson uh, defeated Matt Smith. Um, Steve Johnson was a six with 72 with a zero and Matt was a 681 with a one. So Steve Johnson took on that one. Top alcohol dragster, Joey Severance, 523, 276 miles an hour to defeat Julie Natas, 535 at 278 miles an hour. For top alcohol funny car, Doug Gordon took on Bob McGo McCosh. Um, Doug had a 5.53 with a 4 to Bob's 5.76 with a 5. Comp eliminator, Greg Camplain in a dragster, 6.75, 196 miles an hour to defeat Mike De Palma. In the Pontiac G5, 778, uh, uh, losing 173 miles an hour. In super stock, we had Harvey Emmons win over Brenda Grubbs. Um, Harvey had a 971 with a 1 to Brenda Grubbs, 921 with a 6. Jasmine, would you mind taking the next one? I just realized I missed something on... Uh... Absolutely. And Thank you. Manager, Jerry Emmons took on Brandon Bakey's, I think it is. Um, Jerry had a 10 at 19 with a seven to Brandon's. Val red light, he must left before the tree was activated. Super calm. Michael Holcomb, 890 with a 279 miles an hour. Took out Christopher Dodd, 891 with a one at 176 miles an hour. Huge congratulations to Michael Holcomb. Good friend of mine. Very proud of him. It's his first, uh, I know on, I think it was on Friday. Um, he went four rounds and then turned it red, I believe. Um, so congratulations to him. Super gas, Keith Purvis uh, defeated Austin Williams. Keith was a 990 with a three to Austin's 991 with a seven. All right. Super Street, Crystal Blank and a Chevy Corvette, 1096 with an eight, 142 miles an hour to defeat Dawn Snow in another Corvette, 1095 with a five at 144 miles an hour. And top sportsman, Chris Arnold took on Darian. <clears throat> Um, it looks like Chris had a 690 with a two to Darian's 635 with a five. Right. Top dragster to wrap up the national event this past weekend in Houston, uh, presented by Vortex Superchargers. Mark Jones in his dragster, obviously. 629 with a one at 222 miles an hour to defeat Wayne Landry. 615 with a six at 227 miles an hour. 
And again, that this is the last event for the Houston um, drag leg. Um, no more. Terrible. They're falling by the wayside. Oh yeah. So Lebanon Valley stay strong though. Yep, Howard um, and Wayne take care of us <laughs> very well. <laughs> so, the beginning of the Lucas Oil Drag Racing Series in NHRA Division One also brings back our event that kind of started as a joke and then it took off. For every divisional event in Division One this year, much like last, everybody gets a chance to guess at the correct number of entries. If you correct, if you guess correctly, dead on or closest, excuse me, you win a gift pack from Jegs, custom T-shirt from Mama T's Custom Creations. And anything else that we can think of that's in the Racers News Network prize box. So, to kick off the 2022 Guess the Number of Entries race, by the sheets, I wasn't able to find out how many tech cards were sold, which is okay. I still did the math the old way. By the sheets, 332 cards is what I came up with. Our winner guessed 331. He was the closest. So congratulations to Frank Volpe. He wins the t-shirt, gift pack, and a bunch of random stuff. <laughs> so. I want to say a special thanks to Frankie Volpe. Um, he actually helped me out over the weekend um, with some weather data. I don't use a weather station. And uh, I thought they were going to lose their mind when I said that, but they helped me out um, with a couple rounds to see if it was too slow or too fast or what it was. So thank you to them. What, what were the weather conditions down there? I'd heard a couple different things. It was like very up and down. Um, there was like two or three days, uh, like I think it was Sunday. Saturday was like cool. And then Friday was hot, just kept going up and down and changing. There was no clouds, clouds. Um, and like Thursday, it was, you felt like it was cool out, but then the sun, the sun was just super strong. So I think the track got hotter. It was too many different weather conditions for my liking. Right. Now, obviously, it's kind of hard to, really i guess answer this question with it being your first um event away from home so to speak do you see after this weekend that the weather is going to play a little bit more of a factor than maybe you were ready for yeah uh, yeah definitely a thousand percent um i never realized because when you're running your car all out and you're not trying to slow it down or anything um the weather does definitely change, but you're usually only racing one day. You're racing Sunday as a bracket right. racer, race just right. Sundays, or every once in a while I'll do Saturday, but it's a completely different race than Sunday. Um, now with traveling and then actually doing super comp, it's Saturday, you could have the same exact number that you're going to have in the box on Sunday. Saturday, you run 890, dead on with a zero. Different weather conditions, the next day you're going to run an 895, and... You just have to be ready for that weather change on right. even throughout the day. Cool. Now, did you come into this year, again, with it being really your first year of traveling with the Supercom car, with any expectations, or were you just going to go to as many races as you can and try to get as much knowledge as you can? I didn't really have any expectations besides lose first round every time, uh, <laughs> realistically. But... Um, I think now um, I'm not, I think I was already humbled before I started this. I think I, I worked my way through bracket racing with losing first round every single week from losing second round every week and so on and so forth and kept going and going and going. Um, just learning how to drive 
the finish line more, how to make sure I'm consistent on the tree and just multiple things. And I think now that I'm in super comp, um, I think I have a little bit more confidence than I would have if I just didn't bracket race prior to. I mean, you're always gonna have a couple people that doubt you, you know. I heard a little crap talking when I was in staging lanes, um, actually at ACO. Um, somebody called me a rookie. You know, I am a rookie, but I just took out your friend. So I think that was a humbling moment for that specific person to realize, you know, I might not be a super comp racer, but I still know how to drive the finish line. I still know how to get consistent reaction times. So I can still win. It's anyone's race. Best reaction time this weekend. Worst reaction time this weekend. Uh, best was a 12. Worst um, was Thursday, but it was red. It was 157. Everything else, I was 30ing everyone to death on the tree. 30s all day. I was between 30 to 38. I think my worst one actually racing was a 38. That's not bad. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's like anything else could be better, but it also could be a hell of a lot. It could be a hell of a lot worse too. Yeah. You know? <clears throat> Me saying that again, I couldn't do much better. I can't even do that good on the practice tree on my cell phone. <laughs> well, cool. Well, Jazz, you know, I'm glad you got to get out there, and you know, are we going to see you? Um, at the divisional in New England? I'm trying to remember when New England is. I think I'm actually August. August. Yeah, I should be there. I know I'm going on a cruise next month. I'm going to be away from racing for about two weeks, but after that, I'll be back. Um, hopefully, no more cruises in the race season. Um, trying to get along with that with my fiance, but I don't know. He likes to have that time off. So, right. Well, and then, then obviously next weekend you'll be at Lebanon Valley for the Open. Yep, I'm going to go up and park everything probably on Thursday. Cool. Ah. Well, congratulations. Ah. You did great. Four rounds on your, fir on your first real travel experience with a different car. Yeah. Um, ah. Are you ready to talk to talk juniors with the kids in June? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the juniors were a big part of my life. Um, taught me how to do a lot of different ah. Things within racing. Cool. Uh, comment for you from Pete Sanka. He said, "Great job this weekend, Jazz." Thank you. I, I called. We called Pete, and um, very good moment for me was when I beat Mike Rabalato. He's um, I've been watching him since I was little, and I took him out. So that was probably the best part of my whole entire weekend. <clears throat> Congratulations. Great job. Thank you. You're very welcome. Did you have fun doing this? Yeah, definitely. You want to do it again? Absolutely. Awesome. Good answer. <laughs> so that wraps up this weekend. Uh, again, Lebanon Valley next weekend uh, for the PC Richards National Open starts. Um, I think it's time trials are on Friday. Was, Friday and then Friday is 11 to 4, and then I think time trials to start maybe at 9.30 on um, Saturday, maybe, or 8.30. Yeah. Test and tune or something else going yeah. on in there, too. Test and tune's Friday. Friday, okay. Yep. All right, cool. Well, like I said, Lebanon Valley this weekend, PC Richards National Open. Again, we kicked off the NHRA Lucas Hall Drag Racing Series this past weekend in ATCO. Um, this is a stretch of nine weeks in a row for some people. So, and then obviously next weekend is the, um, the four wides in Charlotte. So now I know what it was. Congratulations to Jackie Frick. Congratulations to Phil Burkhart um, and Jay Blake's team on their wins in alcohol dragster and alcohol funny car this past weekend. Um, Jay has not had his car on the track and, about a year or so and uh you know first race back and knocks it out of the park so congratulations 
And then everybody's favorite alcohol dragster driver, Jackie Frick. What more can we say? <laughs> All right, kiddo. All ready. Have, Have a great fun. night. Thank you for coming on and hanging out. No problem. Bye. All right. Have a good night. Thank All you. right. And we will be back next Monday night. We're going to have Pete back. We're going to have Scott Hall joining us from Morosa Products. We got to talking um, about sponsorship stuff when we have Brandon Bernstein on. And it kind of made the both of us think, what do sponsors expect? from being on your car to being an event sponsor. What do they expect? So we reached out to Scott Hall from Moroso and uh, he's gonna come on and he's gonna answer our questions. So it's gonna be a great conversation. Hopefully you can tune in, check us out live next Monday night at seven o'clock. Have a great night, everybody. And I'll see hopefully some of you at Lebanon Valley. I'll only be able to go on Friday. I got to work all weekend. See you. Oh, thank you, Santo Volpe, for coming on and hanging out too. Appreciate it, buddy. Drive safe, everyone. See you. <laughs>